What's up? We are barbells and button mashing. No, we're good. Yes, button mashing. Barbells. <clears throat> uh, uh, there's there's snacks. We're talking about snacks again. Again, because and snacks are great. We are talking about snacks again because. Do you want to know why? Because I feel like. I don't know why we're talking about snacks again. Yes. Yeah. yeah tell me. Because with like nutrition, and I think with nutrition coaching that I've done in the past, most everybody struggles in this area. With, Sleeping. With, no, with snacks. Snacks and sleep. Snacks and sleeping. I mean, we're talking about the two today. So if you have trouble sleeping, if you don't know what to eat for your snacks, <laughs> stick around. Stay around. We'll be back in a minute to do stuff. So we, we're talking about snacks. Yes. And we're specifically talking about the snacks to eat before bed to help you sleep as opposed to the snacks that you shouldn't eat before you before bed. Before your bedtime. Before, before you go sleep. <laughs> um, because there's some that will keep you awake. There are. And there are snacks that will make you go. Yes. Snooze. Now, which is interesting. Snooze. Because because maybe the snacks that you're choosing around three o'clock that time uh, that you're getting tired mm -hmm. you're eating snacks with like melatonin in it which is just a hormone to make you sleep and that's a problem yes so let's talk about it granted these foods are not going to straight up put you to sleep no so if you eat them at any point in the day they're not going to knock you yes, out absolutely not. but they will assist when it comes to the time of you wanting to Yes, sleep. and I also think we should preface this entire thing that this is just one way that you can help your sleep. There's lots of things that go into your sleep hygiene. Mm -hmm. I would dive into it, but I'd get in trouble. She sure would. The police would. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So I'm not going to So the first thing that you can eat after dinner, mm -hmm. but before you go to sleep... That'll help you just a little bit with your sleeping. Mm -hmm. Almonds. Yes. And why almonds? What's in an almond? Because there is melatonin in almonds, and they're also an anti-inflammatory, which helps like stress and that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. So that being said, I find it funny because almonds are also a really good source of healthy fats. Mm -hmm. So they are an energizing food too. It would just be like a really solid thing to also bring in at night. Mm -hmm. Yes. So does that contradict itself? No. No, it doesn't. You know what? Mixed food. <laughs> <laughs> what else can you eat at night? Everybody knows this one. I mean, I'll give you... It's I'll... right around the corner. Yes. That's what I was going to say. It's right around. It's the right around the corner, about three months away. <laughs> you know what? Turkey day. Yeah, turkey. Gobble gobble. Mm-hmm. Um, gobble 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 gobble. Gobble 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 gobble. Can you tell the difference? No. Turkey skin. Mm, if you know, you know. Um. So why does turkey make you sleepy? Tryptophan. Mm -hmm. I don't actually, is that actually why? That's just like what everybody says around Thanksgiving. Yeah. Well, and basically what the tryptophan does is it increases your melatonin. That's all. It increases the production of your melatonin, which is why it makes you sleepy. Tryptophan makes your body make more melatonin and you go... Makes you sleepy. Right. But for some reason, when you have a turkey sandwich every day mm -hmm. for lunch, mm -hmm. people don't take a nap. Yet on Thanksgiving... All of a sudden, oh, I have to take a nap. And it's just because of the turkey. No, it's because you ate seven meals in one. <laughs> For you overate like a... Mm, yep. Okay, next food that you can eat to make you go sleepy sleep. Uh, one that I can think of off the top of my head, mm -hmm. which I don't even remember if we included in the list, is uh, cherry juice or cherries. Yes. Because cherries actually do also have a lot of, one, antioxidants, but two, mm. melatonin also. Yep. yep. So the other cool thing about cherries is it does have magnesium in it, which helps tart, relax. Tart cherries yeah. and tart cherry juice. Yes. 
it helps relax your muscles because there's magnesium in it. So that's really cool. Specifically, hey, everybody that cramps all the time in their sleep and you wake up crying and think that somebody's breaking your bones. Hey, that I've never could had be a but I I've woken up with cramps. Magnesium. In your You could be deficient in magnesium. And your feet. So mm -hmm. what else can you eat as a snack? Slash drink. Tell you what you can drink. Tell you what you can drink. Chamomile tea. Chamomile. Try that again. Chamomile. <laughs> Chamomile. <laughs> Chamomile. That's what I said. <laughs> Chamomile. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but why does chamomile tea make you sleepy? You tell me. I don't even know why it makes you sleepy. Everybody's, you know, it's it's been said across the ages. Drink chamomile tea. It makes you go sleepy. Like sleepy time tea. So, all of the antioxidants in chamomile reduces inflammation, which will bring down your stress and anxiety, which that helps you sleep. Sidebar, uh, chamomile tea can also help uh, fewer the symptoms of depression. Mm, yep. Which also goes hand in hand with sleep trouble. You mean... There are natural things to help depression. So something that I was very surprised that is that helps with sleep is kiwi, which... You know, that little green fuzzy fruit? Yeah. Is it a brown fuzzy fruit? Okay, well, the outside's brown. The inside is like Shrek green. Yes. It's very pretty and very yummy. Um, and what's in kiwi that helps you sleep? So, serotonin. Serotonin. Yes. Serotonin. So the next one is walnuts. The brain nut. Mm -hmm. Because it makes your brain... No, they just have melatonin and healthy fats in them as well. Mm -hmm. Which makes you go snooze. Yeah. Did you know that so many foods had so much melatonin in it? I did not. I didn't either. That's crazy, man. Mm -hmm. Another tea that I did not even know existed. Mm-hmm. You didn't know passion flower tea didn't exist? I did not know that not passion flower tea did not even exist, even. Passion flower tea. Yes, it does have sleep. It has sleep right in, in it. it. <laughs> inside Just it. Sleep. has sleep inside of it. Night night. It's amazing. There's a chemical in it called night night. Mm -hmm. So another really good thing to have before bed is bananas. Because there is a really good source of magnesium in mm -hmm. that. So that will also help you sleep. And then you can sleep like a little baby monkey. <laughs> but not jumping on the bed? No. No jumping on the bed. I had to go there. Just sleeping like a cute mm -hmm. little baby monkey. Next. Oatmeal? Mm. You could have it as a snack. I mean, yeah. No different than eating cereal at night. Mm -hmm. But that's something you shouldn't eat before bed. What, cereal? Cereal that is high in sugar. Mm -hmm. Because sugar... Sugary cereals. Will keep you awake. Yes, and I feel like a lot of people... A lot of people I know do eat cereal before bed. I used to. <laughs> that bad? I think the biggest thing when, you know, eating before bed and looking at foods before bed is finding stuff that might be like high in magnesium, anti-inflammatories, um, things that are not, you know, super high in sugars. Mm -hmm. And then that, that'll that really help you. Yeah, and stuff that has naturally occurring melatonin, mm -hmm. serotonin. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, and I think it might go without saying. Nothing that has, like, high amounts of sugar, like Eileen said, or caffeine. Mm hmm Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, caffeine's a big one. Yeah, because I think a lot of people struggle with sleeping, and they, they struggle with this topic. And we could go into, and I really wish we could go into all the reasons and all the things that you could work on, but I'm not going to do that. Um, but food is one small, very small fraction <laughs> of what can help your sleep. Mm-hmm. Not to mention maybe screen time, mental health, all the things. <laughs> Pre-bedtime rituals that you could do. There's lots of things that can help your sleep. A lot. So. 
But we're here to talk about food today. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stay on subject. So. So in addition to all the foods that we listed, Mm -hmm. you know, there's also foods that are just in general anti-inflammatory that might help you sleep. And where would we ever find a list of anti-inflammatory foods? In our description? In the guide that we wrote? (laughs) Yes. Yes, in the guide that we wrote. Yeah, you can get it. Yep. It's attached yep. in the description below. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a great source. Thank you for listening. If you liked our video, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, you could give us a thumbs down if you wanted to take the time and pass on your negativity. Um, <laughs> and please like and subscribe and share with your friends if you found we were helpful. Mm-hmm. A little Irish comes on here. <laughs> yeah. So we do, baby. Hey, Shabibi. Shabibi. Hey, yo. Oh, next to me, boy. Shabibi. It's only funny because of how true it is. Stop. Stop. Hey, okay. Restart? No, not really. Because restarting doesn't work. Nope, we're talking. Stop dancing. Okay. <laughs>